Hi. <laughs> I'm going to start. I'm going to start today with a question. So, how many of you have ever taken a career assessment? It's one of these tests that will tell you whether you're good at math or good at language, whether you should choose a career in engineering. I, I suspect many of you have. I was talking to a friend about this the other day, and he told me that, that when he took it, it came out that his ideal career was as a plumber. <laughs> so I think, I think a lot of ink has been wasted in uh, trying to determine what these tests really say about us. I think the answer is really very simple. It's all about learning. It's all about how we take in and absorb information. So in this room, I suspect most of you would be kind of on the language side of the spectrum. But even among you, there would, there would be so, uh, important differences. If we compare one culture against another, we'll find that the differences are starker still. So much so that the stereotype of the German engineer or the French poet seem very true to type. It's as if our, our, our gut is telling us that there's, there's some truth there. Sometimes it happens that a culture develops such a deep understanding and knowledge about a particular field that they kind of extend it in new ways. And they sort of, after carving out that space, they plant their flag there. And their spoken language becomes the basis in terms of which the, the rest of us get to talk about what they created. So for the longest time, if you wanted to learn about philosophy, you had to learn ancient Greek. Even if it wasn't the ancient Greek, the Greek itself that you were after. If you wanted to understand the ideas in philosophy, you had to go through this language in order to get to them, to, in, or, in order to be able to access them. Now, today we see a much more commonplace example of this in, uh, in social media. So these are posts in uh, Spanish-speaking social media, and then, but there are these English words kind of there trying to, kind of poking through from the background. So things like likes and posts, sometimes conjugated in weird and interesting ways, are just kind of mixed in there. And, uh, oh yeah, and of course there are the cats in the corner. <laughs> now what about the, not so much the consumption of media, but the creation of it? Well, it turns out that there we really don't have any choice. The flag has been planted. Programming is an expression of language, and the language that we are talking about here is the English language. For those of us that, that are here that speak it, the good news is that you're a good part of the way towards learning how to program, if that's something you should like to do. It's not quite so great for most of the, most of the people in the world, a, a language that is not English and that might not even be a Western uh, European language of that same tradition. However, the, the entire world is kind of moving towards a place where in our daily lives that really doesn't matter so much. If I share a picture on, on, on Instagram and I write a comment, I kind of expect that there's going to be a translate button somewhere there so that my friends that speak another language, can understand what I'm saying. Language differences matter less and less in our daily lives. When we talk about programming, though, about the means of creation of technology, we are kind of stuck in a different world. When we're not, it's not only monolingual English, it's also kind of monocultural. And the two things really do, do go together. Language is, is, is culture. So we should really question having to include a language and a culture as a means to an end. Now, the end, of course, is producing solutions. Technology is more and more pervasive in our daily lives. It's uh, in our cars, in our homes, soon in, in our own bodies. So controlling how we, how we create and having more and more people access the means of production of technology is a really important thing. This is uh, a device produced by a, a friend of mine that's it's a seeing eye for blind people and it works through ultrasound. It was produced here. This was not about corporations. Uh, it was not about taking over the world with new technology. It was about somebody that Jeffrey, the creator, knew that he wanted to help out. Luckily, his English is very good. He posted on, on Twitter in English. But how many other Jeffreys are, are out there here and in, in the rest of the world that 
are after new solutions to problems that they see every day and are faced with this tremendous amount of baggage to, that they'll have to go through in order to get to, to create what they're looking to do. Is there an altern alternate reality? Is, there, uh, is it plausible to think of uh, a world where a different culture I kind of invented the same thing, but in a different way. So today we're going to look at a culture that is just about as unlike Western cultures as I can possibly think. And we're going to ask, what if the Maya had created programming? Did they even have, from what we know of their mathematics and their language, did they have the tools at their disposal to make this happen? So it's natural to start when we're talking about the Maya with mathematics, a field where they were vastly ahead of their time. Consider, for instance, their independent discovery of zero. Combined with a base 20 system, much like our modern mathematical notation, this means that they had access to a full number line. They could count backwards and rec record historical events that happened thousands of years prior and project well into the future so that somewhere hidden in the, in the jungle, there's likely a stone tablet with an inscription describing a comet or an, a solar eclipse that still have, hasn't happened yet today. It's likely because of their advanced mathematics that the Maya were able to produce a calendar that is in many ways more accurate even than the one we use today. It's perhaps because of their advanced math that the Maya were able to produce a calendar which is in some ways more accurate than the one we use even today. In fact, there's not only one calendar, the Maya used many calendars, which together uh, enabled them to assess the length of uh, a month and a solar year so that it's exactly congruent with modern scientific observations. And it didn't depend on a kind of accretion of changes in a very ad hoc manner in the way that the Western calendar uh, did. So for example, leap years and arbitrary co corrections whenever a new pope came, came in the scene. None of these are there in the Mayan calendar, which is what I think, it points to a really interesting feature of the entire culture. It's kind of synthetic and just so in that they arrived at um, expressions that cut across mathematics, astronomy, history, and many other fields and then just have this air of perfection to them. It, it's really quite interesting. And for sure, more than sufficient to, to base a programming language on. Now, what about language? Although architecture and liter literature and books sometimes reach us in incomplete ways, language is the, the true temple that every culture builds and is carried forward through the generations. The Mayan language, as it's spoken even today, it has about 30 vowel sounds, so a handful more than English. However, some things like the, the, the grammar, the word order, and the absence of cases and conjugation are very much like English. What I think is perhaps most interesting about languages from this continent is an interesting dichotomy where they are rarely based on the I, so me or myself. They are usually languages that talk about the collective. Indeed, one of the languages in this continent, the Aymara, is completely missing that tense altogether. It just doesn't, does not exist. So there, they say there's no I in team. Well, there's def definitely no I in Aymara. So, which, I mean, even thinking about what this means is kind of a little bit, honestly, beyond what I'm, I'm able to, to imagine. But I can tell you this, just from working in, in software for many years, this distinction between the individual and the collective the I and the collective, is emblematic of the struggle over the last 20 or 30 years to get to where we are today. So we are transitioning from a world that is all about single machines, single lines of code executed in sequence, into a world where we have 
many machines talking to each other, uh, systems like Bitcoin and Ethereum that are not about one, there's not a singular there anywhere. It's all, it's all about the collective. So it kind of makes you wonder if programming was based on an entirely different tradition, would we have ended up where, uh, where we are now? Would we have avoided some of the detours along the way? It's worth thinking about. But regardless, there is more than enough in Mayan languages to build a programming language on. So this would be just an interesting thought experiment if, uh, if, it, if it was just a hypothetical. But in, in actual fact, although most, of the peop most people don't know about this, there's already, there are already many different programming languages kind of out there on the fringe of the mainstream tradition that are, are non-English, and this is one of them. This one is kind of a world in, onto itself. You know, you can uh, program in Minecraft by placing blocks and connecting them to each other and, and in this virtual reality world. Now, if, if that's not the most sci-fi thing I have ever said in my life, I don't know what is. Here is another one. This is a language called Piet. And you program it by placing blocks of colors next to each other. And it's both the colors and the relationship with one color to the, the other that gives this its meaning. So this is executable code. This is code that's understandable by, um, by a computer. I don't, I don't understand it, but it's executable. And great for somebody who has a kind of visual mind rather than a language mind that learns in that way. One of my favorites is called Shakespeare. The, the Shakespeare programming language, it kind of, kind of reads in this very verbose way, but it has some special instructions that will be interpreted by a computer. So when it says, enter Hamlet and Romeo, that means something to the, to the computer. And uh, at the end, speak your mind, I think it means print something out on the screen. I'm not quite sure what, what all this stuff in the middle is saying. There are many non-English programming languages in the world. All put together, they're only a fraction of the, the total in existence. I'm happy to, to announce today that we'll, we will be adding to this list a new programming language based on Mayan language and Mayan culture, which is also the first new world, entirely new world programming language in, it, in existence. This, this is an exciting project. The target is to use it as a, to lower the barriers of entry into programming for people who have that tradition. This is one way it could look like, so using some of the grammar. This is another example, which is entirely non nonverbal. It would use strings and colors and patterns and the relationship of one to the other in order to, to create a meaning. So exciting though this is, we're still left with a big question. Why does the entire world not run like this? Why is it that we have this monolingual, monocultural tradition in the means of production of technology even though we can use it in whichever language we, we please. Are we really saying that this is a foregone conclusion? That this is a necessary fact? Is there, in other words, is, the production, uh, in the, is production in the digital world going to be all the same, all done in one way? Or is there a future where, where we have many ways of producing? And really, there's only one reason why we should consider having only one. And it has nothing to do with computers and everything to do with people. Uh, in order to build something complex and useful, we need to speak to our peers, some of which are in other countries. As we said before, though, since what we're talking about is verbal communication, this is actively changing at the moment. 
there are companies out there with a specific mission to make the barriers between people and between cultures kind of go away. So on Facebook, using virtual reality, we, we're not quite sure where this is going to end up. But in all likelihood, the kind of people side of the equation is about to be bridged. And the future looks a little bit like the Hitchhiker's Guide to the, the Galaxy, where there's a, there's, this, there's a Babel fish, and it's something you put in your ear so that it doesn't matter which language somebody else is speaking, you hear something that is just right for you and your worldview. This is why I think through the extension of this from social media into social coding, we're about to see, we're about to enter a new era where we're about to see the true democratization in digital creation. And the Maya will be there ahead of their time again. Thank you.